I'm Jay Postones, and in this lesson, I'm going to teach you to drum with odd timing. Odd time signatures, polyrhythms, displacement, ostinatos, metric modulation, subdivisions, permutations. They're all ways about talking about odd timing. And if you're interested in what any of those words do to drumming, then I'm going to show you in this lesson. My goal when I mess with any of these concepts is to ensure that the music still grooves and that I'm playing with flow. Otherwise, it just sounds crap. So let me walk you through a handful of odd timing concepts, all with a goal of making them groove so that maybe you can start applying them to your own playing. Odd time signatures. This is stage one in the game of odd timing. I've set up a metronome to count 7, 8 at 90 BPM for me. And what that means is that there's going to be seven notes until the count repeats. And we're counting in eighth notes. That's what the eight means. So it's going to be faster. So 90 BPM at an eighth note level is going to be the same as 180 BPM at a quarter note level. Let me just play you the metronome. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The great thing about working with patterns like this is that we can write a pattern that fits into that little loop and we can just repeat that after a short amount of time like this. Once we've got a pattern like that, the other cool thing you can do is to start keeping the right hand consistent. So the first bar, it's going to be playing with what you're playing. It's going to be playing on the beat. And then the second bar of 7-8 is going to be playing on the off beat. Let me show you what that's like. So that 7-8 time signature stayed consistent across those two beats. With the first one, the typewriter beat, where you're starting and stopping all the time, it was just following along with the beat, right? The second version of that beat, still using that same time signature, the right hand is just keeping like a consistent quarter note feel. And you can spread that over uh, 14 eighth notes instead of 7, and it kind of doubles up that whole riff until it repeats. And if you really wanted to, you could halve that again and it could turn it into a heavier beat and it would double the duration. So out of one pattern, you're getting two or four repetitions that could all potentially be a little bit different. If you're watching this lesson on my website, you should head down to the exercises section now because you'll be able to play along to both of those patterns that I just played and you'll be able to see the notation. You'll be able to slow it down to play at whatever speed you need to start at. 
and you'll also be able to loop sections and you'll be able to see the left right sticking all of that stuff is built into the exercises all you need to see all that stuff is a free account and i'll link to that below as well the second concept i'm going to talk about is displacement we just kind of touched on it in that previous exercise the second groove that i played where the right hand separated from what was going on and played on the offbeat it was just displacement it was just being displaced on that offbeat, okay? Let me show you a more complex example of displacement from Tesseract's music. The untrained ear or even the trained ear a groove like that might seem challenging but let me break it down so that you understand what's going on and then i'll give you an exercise that's going to help you to play that kind of stuff that groove is rooted in 4-4 okay it's rooted right there and i'm locking myself into that even though the pattern starts again after 15 16th notes that's what's going on 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and then it starts again, which is kind of a weird place to start, but what it does, if I let my right hand follow that 15, 16, then it kind of creates this cool displacement. And the way that you can start getting used to that kind of thing is by making it dead simple. So this is me making it dead simple for you. We're going to count a bunch of 16th notes, okay? And we're going to count them like this. 1 E and a, 2 E and a, 3 E and a, 4 E and a. That's going to be our bar. 1 E and A. You got those four things that make up a 16th note. And when we get to the 4 E and a, we're going to start again. 1 E and a, 2 E and a, 3 E and a, 4 E and a. Okay, like that. 1 E and a, 2 E and a, 3 E and a, 4 E and a, 1 E and a. And then for that second repetition, we're going to play on the a, uh, one e and a, uh, two e and a, uh, three e and a, uh, four e and. Then we're going to switch to the and, one e and a, uh, two e and a, uh, three e and a, uh, four e and a, uh, one e and a, uh, two e and a, uh, three e and a, uh, four e and. And we're going to play the ands through that one until we get to the four. And surprise, surprise, then we're going to land on the e, four e and a, uh, one e and a, uh, all the way through. So take it back to that level first, just to understand what the right hand is really doing and get that level locked in, and then bring in the other elements of that beat. And I'd start with just the kick and the snare. That's where I'd start, and then when that's locked in and you've got the right hand and the one and the two over here, let's get the hi-hat going as well, because that's that extra level of limb independence that, honestly, without my pedal hat, I feel lost a lot of the time. So get, developing that to the point where it becomes your metronome, your inner metronome is really useful. From there, you can start to evolve the groove a little bit more by making the kick follow the right hand every now and then so that it kind of locks back in with that displacement and then that makes the whole groove start to feel as though oh, it's jumping forward or it's being held back. That's exactly what we're doing in that Tesseract groove. 
and the way to write those kinds of things is using a computer you might be able to do it in your brain you might be able to follow some notation if you're able to write these things out but honestly if you're not already using a computer when you're composing then you're at a massive disadvantage especially in 2023 which is when i'm recording this that's how a lot of these things are done that's how i speed up the process massively if you want to learn more about that process make sure you're on my mailing list and when that form comes up put a tick in the composition box and you'll get linked to a lesson that deals with that exact process polyrhythms let's talk about the concept that you're probably watching this lesson for polyrhythm is dead easy it's just when you count two numbers at the same time two three polyrhythm for example is that there's three on the floor tom and two on the snare one two three one two three one two one two and these can get as crazy as you want you can put any two numbers together and form a polyrhythm but the higher up you go and you start putting odd numbers together and weird numbers it just gets ridiculous and it's very 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 difficult it becomes more difficult to groove basically and that is why a lot of the music that i play with tesseract tends to be based in two three three four and five four polyrhythms those are the three that i use the most now that two over three polyrhythm the way i just played it it's crap no one is doing that because it's rubbish let me show you a good way of using that two three polyrhythm if we put the threes on the pedal hat and we put the twos on something on our right hand immediately you've got something that provides a limb independence challenge and can be used as the basis for a groove such as this one So there's an example of that two over three polyrhythm used musically. How do you get to that point? By unlocking the coordination between your left leg and your right hand to keep that kind of pattern down whilst you're playing other things. So let's practice that. That's one way of using that 3 over 2 poly in a way that you maybe haven't used before. There's an easier thing you can do as well, which is literally just starting out with a 3 over 2 poly with a groove that's based between the right hand and the kick. That kind of thing, my right hand and my right kick, playing that three over two poly. And then you can start to elaborate, which is kind of what I did towards the second half of that groove. And you can do the exact same thing with the other polyrhythms. So the three, four polyrhythm, for example. Score extra points if you can tell me what Tesseract song that groove was from in the comments.
So how on earth is that pattern the five over four polyrhythm? Let me show you. The kicks and the right hand are locked into a repeating five pattern. One, two, three, four, five. 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 That's just sped up. And we're playing that to a 4-4 four, four metronome. That still doesn't explain it because it's really fast and no one's counting fives and fours that fast. So let me slow this metronome down and really explain it. There's our four count, nice and easy. One, two, three, four. And along to that, imagine a 16th notes, we're gonna count fives. So one, two, three, four, five, 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 one, two, three, four, five. But instead of playing all of them, we're just gonna play the first three. One two three four five. 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 I'll sped up a little bit there, but it doesn't matter. Now, if I just take the first hit, I'm going to stop the metronome. If I just take the first hit of all of those fives, one two three four five. One two three four five. If I just play that, right to that metronome, count how many clicks there are on that metronome. Two, three, four. There are five clicks. I'm playing four over here. And there are five metronome clicks. That's because it takes five quarter notes for that pattern to repeat. Let me break that down even further so you can hear both of those things at the same time really clearly. My kick drum is gonna keep the count that the metronome was just counting. My right hand is gonna keep the count that I was counting. Okay, and you'll hear the five and the four. There you go. Like magic, all of a sudden, all this nonsense makes sense. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four. There's your five over four poly with them. Hiding in plain sight when you're doing all that madness. The metronome, the relationship between the metronome and your right hand and kick. There's your five over four poly with them. And that's just one example of the kinds of beats that I like to play. And it also leads nicely into another concept ostinatos because that's exactly what we're doing there as well it's the same thing we're taking a pattern and we're just repeating it into the future and that's something that we like to do with tesseract <laughs> There's an example of an ostinato. It's a pattern that in that groove was on the kick, it was following the guitars, and it repeats after a few bars. So that isn't crazily complex. It's a little bit complex. It's not just keeping the beat neat. A little complex. But the band for me that really made that type of composition, that type of playing uh, popular, was Meshuggah. They do it incredibly well. They take this pattern that's mental, and they repeat it at a really odd point, and... That's what really got me into this kind of stuff. Now, let me give you a exercise or two that is going to help you develop that skill. Pick a number. It can be any number. It doesn't matter. I'm going to do a five because I like fives and I'm going to play one, two, three, four, five. It doesn't matter what I play it on. The important thing is that I've got a couple of accents in there. So I'm going to play uh, one, two, three. So the one and the threes are going to be accent. And then I'm going to play two of those in a row because I just decided I was going to play two of those in a row. And then after that, I'm going to play four. So five, five, four. There's my pattern. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four. And it doesn't have to be on those instruments that I just played. That's just to give you guys the example of how I'm using these numbers. Now, if we take that pattern and apply it to the kick, just the accents from that pattern, though. So one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four. Or if it's fast. 
and play that either to a metronome or you can use the right hand like I just did which becomes the metronome then start to bring the snare in now the snare it can be in a regular place just consistent so that you get used to it um, kind of how it repeats that's how I'd start typically with something like this put it in a consistent place and then maybe you can start messing around with the timing of it once that pattern is really cemented in your brain and you're not having to think about the 554 you don't want to be counting it you literally don't want to be counting it it's got to be at the point at the stage where it's just a pattern that you can hear and you could think <laughs> you could think of it in your sleep you know it's that you're that familiar with it so for the starting point get that snare in at a regular point um and i typically use a computer for this because i can program it in i can program the beat into my into cubase and i've got the reference point there that i know is correct if i'm listening to it and i'm playing it a bit different and it's a little bit janky then I've got that reference point. I can watch the MIDI and it's going to be much easier. But for this, I'm just going to try and power through it and play the five, five and the four. And I know that after five, five and four, playing that twice, that whole pattern is going to repeat. So because you've got your nice even number and that fits into uh, bars of four, four, nice and easy. So five, five and four, accenting the one and the three, one and three, and then the one, two, three, four. That's the pattern that I'm going to play. If you want to play along to this as an exercise, then make sure you're watching the exercise on my website. Again, you can slow it down and start at the speed that makes sense for you. Easy way to make that one heavy. Just halve what you're doing with the right hand. Put it up on the china. You've got your massive beat just by doing that. It's got to that time of day now where the sunlight is hitting the window behind me. So the illusion that I'm in some fancy studio somewhere and not just a spare bedroom in my house is completely shattered. But anyway, let's crack on with the lesson. Metric modulation, that's going to be the next thing that I cover. And the cool thing about metric modulation is that it enables you to time travel. Metric modulation, let's talk about that for a minute because this is a really cool tool that you can use when writing. Metric modulation enables you to sound as though you're playing in a different time. You can be rooted very much in the metronome or in the song, what everyone else is playing, but it enables you to go off and do your own thing in this weird timed world for a moment and then come back perfectly in time. And to do that, we can use polyrhythms. This is all part of the same family. It's all odd timing, the same family of terms. They're all kind of related. So if I look at that beat that I just played, that three over two polyrhythm beat, just from there, there's a handful of things immediately off the top of my brain that I can do to it to make it feel as though I'm playing something different, to make it feel as though I'm speeding up or slowing down or doing something that to the listener feels like whoa there's something going on there and let me show you what those are so start with that three over two polyrhythm groove that we just messed with just keep it simple and then you can throw in a throw in one of those and it helps 
make the beat feel as though it's sped up. For that moment, you're kind of playing this almost like punk beat. And we're still perfectly in time with that metronome. We're coming back in on the one. Nothing has changed. We're just giving that perception that we've sped up. And all I'm doing there is kind of a offset double stroke between my kick and my left hand. One, two, three, four. 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 And then I come back in on the one. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That's all that's going on there. That is actually a polyrhythm. So if we listen to that metronome, two, three, four, in that three over two poly, we're used to this being the three, okay? One, two, three, one, two, three. But what we're gonna do is, is switch it so that what we're playing on the hands is the three for a minute. So one, two, three, one, two, three. Let me do it again. One, two, three, one, two, three, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three. It doesn't matter where the snare goes, but all you're doing is against that pulse, we're offering up a different way of hearing that three over two poly with them. And that is giving that perception, that metric modulation thing. Something else we can do, which sounds completely messed up, but works quite nicely, is use a three over four poly with them to create that metric modulation as well. And to do that, we're gonna use the metronome. That's our four, four metronome over here. One, two, three, four. We're gonna use the pedal hat count that we've established. One, two, three, one, two, three, in that three over two poly. We're gonna count six of these. One, two, three, four, five, six. And on the one, three, and the five, one, two, three, four, five, six. We're gonna place a uh, right hand, ride, second hat, anything. And then on that, we can do that. And then we come in perfectly after three. Sounds a bit silly, doesn't it? It sounds ridiculous, but I didn't change time. The metronome stayed exactly the same. All that happened was I messed with a polyrhythm. I used another element of what I was playing to establish a different timing, and I just followed that different timing while being locked into that polyrhythm. That kind of stuff can take a little while to develop, and again, it's the kind of thing that if you're trying to get all fancy with, it can help to write the thing on a computer first because these things can be super complex, but... There's a couple of examples there of how you can use metric modulation within your playing. It's just about being locked into the original timing and having a couple of tools to quickly kind of phase shift into another feel for a moment. But you have to be very familiar with how that feel locks into that original metronome. Otherwise, it all falls apart. If you don't come back in on that one, then it's crap. Don't do it if you don't come. And it takes a little while, okay? It's going to take a while for you to get to the point where you come back in on the one and it's confident and feels great. But those couple of exercises should at least get you on the path.
there's a few exercises for you to work on to improve your odd timing and hopefully within a musical context because that's always the goal there's no point just knowing what the word is you've got to kind of know how to apply it musically and if that's something you want to explore in a load more detail if you want to really go down the rabbit hole and you want to pour jet fuel on your drumming skills in that world check out my progressive drumming masterclass it's an online course split across five modules containing 40 drum lessons that takes you through practicing identifying what to practice setting up a solid practice routine and all of those kinds of things it takes you through the fundamentals correcting techniques getting everything about you and your kit set up to be efficient and then it gets into progressive drumming concepts so a load of the things that i've covered briefly in this drum lesson we go much further down those rabbit holes so if that's something that you want to explore i'll leave a link in the description for you i just want to say a big thank you to everyone that's made it this far into the video and if you're not already please consider hitting that subscribe button i don't get anything for it but it does help it helps the reach of these videos and it might reach another viewer another drummer like yourself who could benefit from it